So let's go back to the recruiting. What did you look for when a guy came, I imagine sat in your family room mm -hmm. in Millard, Ohio? <laughs> yeah. um, what did you look for? I, did, I just wanted a place where I, I felt comfortable. Um, not all that different from where I, I came from or what I've been through. Um, and Akron had that, had those qualities. Um, just some stones were in place, you know, that I was looking for. But pretty much, and the style of play. I mean, Co Coach touched on um, uh, recruiting kids that can come into his system and, and fit in his system. He wants winning guys. He don't want guys that can score at will. You know, sometimes one on one, and he wants team guys. And that's so you wouldn't have wanted World Be Free, I, I guess. Well, if World Be Free cared about winning, I, I'd love World Be Free. Okay. Like, like LeBron's a big scorer, and I'd take LeBron on my team because he cares most about winning. So I think it all depends on individuals, but we all know the guy that has great talent that underachieves winning-wise. We've all seen that in, in sports throughout our lives. Yes, and, we have. And those are the guys that I try to shy away from. Now, it's hard to know sometimes. That's, that's the hard part in recruiting. And I imagine it's hard for, for the person being recruited to know, too, because, I, I mean, no coach is going to sit in your living room and say, well, you know, you're going to sit on the bench, you're not going to play. I mean, no one's going to say that, but yet it's going to happen to some. So what would you say is, is this, if there's one single most important thing in recruiting, what is it? Well, we have to stay at it. We have to be early, especially at our level. We are not Ohio State, for instance. We, we have to get on these young men when they're young. And we have to develop better Young relationships. Young meaning when? Well, I mean, we know a lot of kids since the sixth, seventh, eighth grade. You know, a lot of kids we won't know until they're sophomores. But that's been a key for us is figuring out who we can get first off because we can't we can't go head up at this point in our program with the high high majors. Now, a kid in sixth grade, how do you know if you're looking at a kid that? Is for whatever reason is is pretty much hitting his peak there and isn't going to get a lot better or if you're looking at a kid that still is going to continue to improve you don't, you don't. <laughs> that's that's the beauty of it you just you recruit enough of them that and you see enough kids play like we see kids at our camp that you just keep your eye on people and you you know the thing is in basketball you're only recruiting three four five a year it's not like you're in football where you're recruiting 25 so you just keep plugging away every day doing something and you normally have enough guys that you can you can recruit. All right, let me ask, it may be a difficult question, I'm going to ask both of you from a coach and from a playing perspective. If you had a choice of recruiting a player who was a, a good player with a really good work ethic and you had a choice of a player that was a great player with a less great work ethic, which one would you take? Well, that's a good hypothetical question, and it, it really depends on your, the culture of your team, and it depends on what you're trying to do with your program. And, uh, you know, there, there would be times that I would take the good player with the great work, great work ethic over the great player with, with a, a, right, a but poor that's work ethic. Be so my, my, question would, my, my question would be how much risk I was willing to take. So that if I had a 12 guys in my program that had great work ethic, I may take the other guy with the, with the potential to try to get us to the next level. If I had a team whose culture was not very settled, where we had some work ethic issues, then I'd probably take the good player with the good work ethic. And from a, a, a playing standpoint, do you have a preference as to which one you would want to play with? I'd rather play with the kid with a good work ethic. Um, I mean, we have a guy on our team right now with a great work ethic. Worth ethic. Um, excuse me, and um, he's he's a pretty good player as well, and it's Cedric Middleton. And after playing with him, I don't I don't think I could, if, you know, ask that question. I don't think I could play with another type of guy. Um, he has a great work work ethic, a great person, and uh, I think um, he's a prime example that fits that mold of that question you asked. Great. Well, you have seen two stellar examples from the University of Akron men's basketball team today. Nick Dials, a 22-year-old. Um, um, that you'll see back next year, mm -hmm. yes, and Coach Keith Dambrot, both members of the team that had 26 wins. Um, stay and watch them come out into a game. I'm sure they'd love to come and, and have you come next year when they win 27 or 28 games. Um, 
things w have to be different next year, one year from today. These two are going to work 24-7 to make sure that there's a different outcome a year from now. We've had an inside look um, at college basketball, at recruiting from a player's perspective, from a coach perspective, what makes up a team, how do you evaluate potential, all questions and challenges that we have in any of our businesses that we especially see in sports. I think you'll agree that Akron, the region, the university are fortunate to have these representatives for Civic Forum of the Air. I'm Leslie Unger.